Hey there, welcome to Out and About Art, your PGTV source for all things art in Polk County. I'm your host, Dion Spires. I'm here at the Lake Wells Art Center today to talk about one of the biggest annual art events in the Lake Wells area. The Lake Wells Arts Festival is coming up on February 24th and 25th, and here to talk to me about the event are Erica O'Neill and Chip Thulberry. Welcome guys, thank you for joining me here today. We're here at the Lake Wells Art Center in the gallery. Um, so I know that this center for a long time was owned by Polk State College and it's recently changed ownership back to the Lake Wells Arts Council, which is awesome. That's um, Erica, you, I imagine, were pretty involved in that process or at least know a lot about it. Um, talk to me a little bit about what that means for the Lake Wells Arts Center and what it means for the future of the programs here and everything. Well, we're very excited to have um, ownership of the building once again. The, the Arts Council um, owned it prior to Polk State. Um, it went in Polk State's hands for six or seven years. They were wonderful stewards and then it just recently has been um, deeded back to the Arts Council. We're um, very excited about the opportunities that that is offering us. Um, our increased programming um, abilities under Polk State. We really supplemented um, a little bit of programming into their programming, but now that we have ownership, uh, the Arts Council is in charge of the year-round programming, so it offers us the ability to really expand what we're offering, um, maybe introduce some new programming that we haven't um, seen before and then bring back old programs like Arts Camp, which we're in the process of planning for this summer. Oh, nice. So what is Arts Camp? Is that a kids program that you that do? That is do for kids and uh, usually I broken into a few age groups, um, a younger, maybe middle, elementary, middle school, and then some geared a little more towards high school. <coughs> and, <coughs> excuse me, they're in two-week segments and you can sign up for one session or both sessions and they have different focuses. There might be a, a music um, class or a drawing class, so lots of variety. Cool. Now, um, for people who are maybe viewing and don't know, what is the Lake Wells Arts Council and what do you guys do in this community? Well, the Lake Wells Arts Council is was founded in 1972, mm. I yes. believe, and by a group of citizens that you really had the desire to increase art exposure to the community. So since that time, um, they've introduced um, great opportunities for music and um, performing arts and visual arts. and. We are mostly volunteer base. Our board is very active in running all the committees to just expand the overall art exposure for the entire community. Excellent. And with that said, you guys have a big event coming up that's gonna provide a lot of exposure for the art community. That's the Lake Wells Arts Festival. Um, Chip, I know that you are the, the chair this year on the Arts Festival. So give me a little bit of background on the history or let's start with your history on it, because you've been involved with this festival and with the Arts Council for a while. Give me some background on you. Um, I was asked uh, back in the early 90s to, to serve on a, a committee or to chair a committee of the festival. Uh, and so I did that and, and I worked on a number of different committees and then was asked to chair the show in, uh, in both, I think it was 97 and 98. Uh, and then I've continued to, to serve in various capacities and they again ask that I chair the show um, this year. Excellent. So it's been going for a while now. It's obviously kind of yes, a big deal for this the, area. Right. This is the 47th annual uh, show. Uh, it started in the early 70s, was actually begun by the AAUW and uh, after a couple of years they turned it over to the Arts Council and uh, the Arts Council has been responsible for it since then. Okay. And what is the AAUW? the American Association of University Women. Oh, okay, great. Their local chapter here uh, were, were the ones who, who began the show. And in those, and, and that first show was simply a, uh, uh, a sidewalk affair up at the public shopping center. Wow. Uh, and it's grown quite a bit since those early days. Yeah, so where does it take place now? How, how big has it gotten? Um, it takes place on the shores of Lake Wales um, and it's, 
Uh, we expect this year to have somewhere between 80 and 100 artists. Wow, that's awesome. So what type of art do you guys bring out for the festival? Does it change up every year? What do you guys uh, have? Artists, uh, artists from around the country submit uh, samples of their work for our viewing and from that we choose artists um, to uh, have booths at the show uh, and you have painting and photography, uh, sculpture, uh, ceramics, jewelry. Uh, so there, there are a number of mixed media, there are a number of different uh, categories. Mm -hmm. Lots of variety to check out yes. for sure. So when you say that the artists come out and they apply for the, or they send you your samples of work mm -hmm. to take a look at, what are you guys looking at whenever you're picking art to feature in this festival? Well, we want to be sure that, that it's quality art, that, it, that we have a reputation of being a fine art and fine craft show. Uh, and so um, we, want to, uh, we want to have artists who, who produce quality art in, in a number of different price ranges. Uh, so, that uh, so that whatever your, your uh, level of, of interest in art, you can, that the public can uh, afford to purchase it. Earlier, Erica mentioned while she was talking about the center here that she's got um, an art camp that she's planning and the arts are really important for the kids. Are there kid activities that are tied into this arts festival that they can enjoy? Yes, uh, in two ways. One is that through the schools we have a, a student art show, mm -hmm. which is actually one year older than, than the uh, Lake Wales Arts Festival. Wow. <laughs> and, um, and this year, uh, it, the the students' work will be shown at the Lake Wales Public Library throughout the month of uh, February. Um, in addition to that, we, uh, we have a children's activity tent down at the site of the show, which runs uh, both days, and it provides uh, free activities for the children while, they're, while their parents um, are looking at, uh, looking at the adult art. Now let's talk a little about your venue too, the shores of Lake Wales. I imagine that that's a really beautiful um, place to have an art festival and for people to come out and kind of take in that environment and the art. Can you guys talk about that venue and what's great about that? Well, it's, um, it's under the uh, oak trees uh, down by the lake. And as you say, it's, it's a lovely setting. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, it, it provides uh, a, a, just a great place for all that goes on there. In addition to the art, uh, there's, there's music, uh, we have food trucks, um, and uh, there's a kickoff. Actually, the show is on Saturday and Sunday. We have a kickoff, what we call Art BQ, uh, on uh, Friday night okay. uh, to, uh, to kind of celebrate the beginning of the show. You want to talk a little bit about that, Erica? Certainly. Well, this year we decided to change things up a little and um, Saturday morning there's also a patron's breakfast that um, for the sponsors and patrons of the Arts Council. So we've decided to kind of combine the two in a common theme and so this year's Art BQ we're doing a Hawaiian Polynesian theme so the food will be centered around that and there will be some um, performers coming in to provide um, a nice entertainment so we're trying to spice things up a little and, and let it be a, a fun evening for the entire family. Yeah, so, And where, you may have said this already, where does that uh, barbecue event take place? Is that also on? On the shores of Lake Wells, yes. So it's a beautiful setting with the, uh, the lake in the background having a, a nice um, barbecue picnic dinner at the lake, if you will. Yeah, absolutely. Now, Chip, you said that you had been chairman before they asked, or they needed a chairman this year, and you agreed to do it again. What is it about this festival that draws you in, since you've been involved with it for so long? Um, I, well, I think, it's, I, I think it's one of the great things that, that this community in Lake Wales does. Uh, there, there are several things that happen down by the lake, uh, but the, the oldest of them is the Arts Festival, and as a native Lake Whaley, and I'm just proud of the of uh, that the city that that this small community can produce such a, um, a quality festival, and I'm excited always to be a part of that. Absolutely, and it's it's good that you said a small community because Lake Wales really is kind of a like a compact little area. <laughs> um, 
And I think it's neat that you guys do have such a big festival that happens annually and has stood the test of time. The arts, I feel, are always really important, no matter how big or small the area is. Erica, with the Lake Wales Arts Council, how important is it to you guys to be bringing this um, kind of culture and this arts to the community in this area? Oh, I think it's critical. And as a, a fellow Lake Well or native Lake Wellian, I um, it's a huge part of, has been a huge part of my life, having grown up here. And um, for a town of our size, I, I think we are blessed here in Lake Wells to have such an organization to, to offer such a diverse um, exposure to different arts. So, you know, and even in, you know, I think countywide, we have this fabulous building here, historic building. So, you know, I think it's truly a, a, a gem of, of the county and um, I think offers an opportunity for uh, many people to have an exposure to, to art that otherwise, you know, they never in their life might be able to enjoy. So we have an important job. Well, thank you guys so much for talking to me. You guys have a great two, three day event coming up and I hope you guys have a big success this year. Thanks. Absolutely, Wait. thank you for coming to yeah, see us. Absolutely, anytime. The Lake Wales Arts Festival takes place on February 24th and 25th on the shores of Lake Wales. It'll run from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. on Saturday and 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. on Sunday, and there's free parking and free admission. If you're looking for a good time and good food, come on out on February 23rd at 6 p.m. to their Art BQ kickoff event, where you can enjoy high quality art and some great barbecue by the lake. For more information, visit www.lakewalesartscouncil.org slash arts hyphen festival. Now we're going to take a look at an event that happened at the end of 2017, just before the holidays. We went out to First Baptist Church at Eagle Lake for a very special performance from VSA Florida. VSA Florida is an organization that promotes art education for those with disabilities. Within this program, they have artist residency classes taught by experts within their field. This performance was held to highlight those classes. Check this out for more information on VSA Florida and the Student Showcase. The mission of ESA Florida is to provide support and champion arts education and cultural experiences for and by people with disabilities. And so we do this through a variety of different programs. Um, our biggest program is our Artists in Residence program, which is what we're here today for, to see the final performances for um, five of the schools here in Polk County. Then we also do uh, a lot of training for teachers and teaching artists on accommodations um, for how they can include students with disabilities in the arts. So music, performing arts, visual arts, dance, a uh, little bit of everything. We even do literary arts. Basically, they want you to use your skills as a musician or as a dramatist or as a, a movement specialist to interact with children who have special needs and get them excited about whatever it is your, your area of expertise is. I have two groups performing today. One of them is um, from Gene O'Dell Learning Center. And that particular group, we basically learned how to sing with proper voices, inside, outside voices. We learned a little bit about highs and lows in music and um, mainly we just had fun. You know, movement with music and good things. And then today you will see just a, two or three of the songs that we liked the most out of what we did. This is my favorite part of the job. <laughs> Actually, I love doing the final performances because, uh, you know, working in the office, we don't get to necessarily see what the kids learn and the experiences they have. And here we actually get to see what they've you know, been able to do and the joy on the kids' faces when they actually complete it. Really, for these students, it's, it's not about the performance. Uh, we've spent eight lessons uh, with the students and that's a pretty short amount of time. Um, getting them acquainted with our subject matter. In my case, it was music, and we did a lot of things besides prepare for this performance. And my way of teaching and my ideas about music education are you give the children the information, you get them excited about it, and then 
let them show what they've learned, basically. I remember a kid um, in Hillsborough County who, he was so nervous to get on stage. I mean, terrified to get on stage. He'd never been on stage before, and he was in high school. And he finally got on stage, he did his performance, and he literally jumped off the stage and was like high-fiving people as he came down, saying, I did it! And I'm like, that's what we're trying to get these kids, you know, that they're the center of attention at this point, and they feel this sense of pride that a lot of times kids with disabilities don't get to feel because, you know, they're not necessarily able to participate in everything that their, you know, typically developing peers would be able to do. And they may not be the person who's the star of the show, and then today they are the star of the show. So it's really exciting to be able to see it. Whether it's visual art, performing art, studies show that students actually do much better and they generally stay in school. Um, and this is for all socioeconomic statuses, you know, for students who are low socioeconomic status all the way up to higher ones, they do better when they're in the arts. But for students that have disabilities, it's really amazing because the strides that they make um, in their communication, in their verbal expression, um, their emotions, their social skills. I think it gave them a little something besides the academic side or besides the, the integration into learning, how to survive in life, and the, you know some really intense things. It gave them a fun side to something. And it's something they can use later. It's not something that they just if I'm not there, they can't do it. It's just amazing to see where they are at the beginning of the residency to where they are at the end. For more information on VSA Florida and their programs, visit them on the web at www.vsafl.org. Now we're here at Outer Space Art Gallery in Winter Haven, one of my favorite art venues in the area, to talk with Jane Wanners about what they have coming up in the gallery. Hey Jane, thanks for having me out at Outer Space once again. Mm -hmm, yeah, absolutely, I'm glad you guys are here always. Yeah, I love this place. <laughs> cool. So let's talk a little bit about what you guys have coming for 2018. I'm sure you have some big plans in the works. You know what we do? Um, actually, uh, we developed an advisory board for 2018 and that's new for us. Um, from the administrative side of what we've done at Outer Space and Arts Ensemble, we've always been able to work on a very small board. Um, the blessing in that is, is it makes possible dynamic movement very quickly. There's not a lot of thoughts at the table. We all come in and we sit down with five of us and make a plan for what's going to be next. But we realize that we have a gym in downtown Winter Haven at Outer Space and that we need to be able to do greater programming with greater marketing and it, at the end of that, greater fundraising. And so we've developed a board, um, amazing group of five very strong ladies. We love boys, we do. <laughs> um, but uh, it worked out that we had five ladies that, that are on the board that are go-getters, which is what I totally needed yeah, in life. Um, but it is going to bring some really cool programs to our space. One of the big things that's changing is we've been doing, um, like, I'm going to give a, a round number because these numbers change a little bit depending on artists, about six shows. A year, okay, so that's a lot of movement, yeah, okay? Definitely. We're a progressive gallery. Our entire plan of action is to, to put the coolest, edgiest thing on the market in the market, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Um, and, um, and I've sort of always done that. We've been now doing this for 13 years. That's hard to believe. Mm -hmm. Outer Space has been here only for a couple of years, mm -hmm. um, but it's kind of the second generation, you know? It's like Arts Ensemble 2.0, right. you know what I mean? So. Um, I'm excited about the programs that we have upcoming um, in, in what I was just saying that um, we're not going to be doing six shows. We're going to be doing fewer shows and we're going to be opening programming more um, for some of our progressive arts friends. Um, you know, giant trend everywhere is make organizations, um, you know, and I'll give examples such as Make Lakeland, um, uh, Make Plant City, Orlando Makers, you know, um, and it really is touching on the 40 and under generation of creative thinkers. Mm -hmm. So the biggest thing that will be happening this upcoming year is Make Winter Haven. Oh, cool. And uh, we will be working to pull together our young professional creative minds in one space to do really cool things. Love to say that this was my original idea. It was not, <laughs> it was not. Lakeland, um, our sister company, or our sister city, rather, um, man, they're just hip and cool all the friggin' time. Yeah, you know, they've I, got a lot of like, stuff going on. They, that was a really good idea. We should do that in Winterham, <laughs> and I want to see how that works. And, you know, and, and I think that if we're wise as, as a county um, in the arts, 
we're going to duplicate the successful efforts mm -hmm. in our own way, with our own unique spin, with our own um, incremental plan and stepping it out. Um, and that's going to be probably the biggest change. You know, we have um, a writer's association that meets with us now. Um, we're open for writers. We have a gallery space that's dedicated just to writers. Yes. That's kind of ongoing. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, we love our friends at PGTV. You guys have, have kind of shared some of these things that we're doing. Um, but definitely our makers uh, program is going to be the newest. You mentioned that you guys always have edgy and new kind of content coming in here. Mm -hmm. And this piece behind us is yeah. a great example of that. And it's a big deal. Mm -hmm. So um, this piece is by Banksy. He's an international artist. Um, start off, give me a little bit of background on who Banksy is for people who don't know and then how you guys got this piece. So I'm going to say it in the way that I would say it. Um, I've read many articles and I've watched multiple um, video on Banksy and for me Banksy is everything that Arts Ensemble promotes. It is taking art to the streets. It's defying political movement. It's, it's, you know, it's that edge between vandalism and true art mm -hmm. that, that meets on a wall and becomes something dynamic and powerful in movement. Um, we certainly know that um, collectors worldwide want an original Banksy. They mm -hmm. just do. Definitely. You know, um, we were very fortunate. Uh, uh, local publisher Chris Sexton and his wife Amy Sexton, um, who are just beautiful in the Winter Haven community and have worked so hard to get this piece. Um, they actually located the piece. Um, and, and said, you know, if we can come up with a funding for that, and then Arts Ensemble stepped in and said, yeah, we're going to come up with a funding for that. Of course, yeah. because, <laughs> because I don't know if you've been to Eloise, but I'm kind of in to street art big time. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, we need Banksy here, mm -hmm. you know. And, um, and, you know, we love all of the arts organizations that are in our community, and we try to support their efforts as much as we can. Quite frankly, as a nonprofit group, we, as, as much as time allows to support their efforts. Um, but when we had the opportunity to get this piece, I was like, I don't care what it costs. <laughs> <laughs> gonna make it happen. I don't care. I want it here. Um, <laughs> and because the, we are truly a progressive arts gallery, we're the right place for Banksy. Mm -hmm. We just are, you know. And sure. um, that was the whole reason that we did the street art festival was to pull together cool and edgy artists. So speaking of our our sister. Um, city, Lakeland, I think probably the coolest thing at the art festival was definitely that um, the makers group from Lakeland came over and that we were their very first show as vendors. Um, so they brought together their artists, um, their creative makers, and they were the show. Um, for the festival portion of what we were doing. Um, we had a lot of really cool um, community friends jump in. And so when I say, you know, yeah, we're going to pay for the piece, that, that's such a tiny part of what made the festival cool. And our goal with this festival wasn't just this year. It was to say, listen, Winter Haven, we are progressive, we're cool, we're hip, we're trendy. We're doing this every year. And so next year, um, what we know we're going to see is a street festival that will mirror a piece of what Shine is. We already have the alley picked out. We were actually thinking of doing that particular festival this year, um, but it just didn't work out because we got Banksy. And so Banksy was a bigger deal. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely, for sure. Yeah. So with saying that, that Banksy is a big deal, why is this piece and the fact that it's here in Winter Haven in Polk County, why is that important for, for this art community here? Banksy is worldwide. Um, it, Banksy is who street artists aspire to be, absolutely. And um, to be able to bring Banksy to us, to Polk County as a whole, um, was paramount. Um, it puts us on a different map in the arts, and it's an international map in the arts. Um, as, the, as the festival was nearing, the calls we were getting were from North Carolina. We were getting calls from Atlanta. Um, and while that doesn't sound like New York City, that's a travel to see a piece that's at a gallery oh, yeah. in downtown Winter Haven. Um, you know, so to see 3,000 people at an arts festival in downtown Winter Haven that began as a great idea, 
you know, and then came to fruition. And I just, you know, I want to make sure that I give credit where credit is due. That's kind of who we are at Arts Ensemble. Chris and Amy Sexton, um, paramount in the program. Um, because we are so, so regional as an organization, I couldn't be as involved in, in the dynamics of our street festival. Its success it absolutely was pivotal to their involvement. Um, their marketing of what we were doing was a big deal. Mm -hmm. And then um, I want to definitely mention 610 as one group. Um, 610 is, they are the innovators of things that are cool in downtown Winter Haven. If they have an idea, it's going to stick and it's going to work and it's going to be the thing you want to be a part of. Mm -hmm. um, and then definitely um, Citrus Source and Fruitarum, who make it possible to pay for cool art for my organization. There are benefactors. Without them, we do nothing. We don't have outer space. Mm -hmm. um, this street art festival, however, was the start to something annual that we want to see continue as progressive arts and edgy arts. We want outer space, as we saw that it could happen with Banksy, mm -hmm. to become a destination location in the arts for Polk County. And we want to celebrate this Polk County wide. This doesn't belong to us. The arts cannot belong to us. That's why Banksy is so important. Um, I love that he defies political edge, mm -hmm. that, that his work speaks to the importance of humanity, that his work once on a wall becomes one of the most valuable pieces of artwork that you can collect. You know, um, Chris Grives definitely knows that, um, who is the collector for this piece. Um, when the piece was going to be taken down in 2010, he purchased the piece. Um, he definitely is, is a beautiful art collector. He has taken very good care of the piece and he shares it with the world. That's awesome. He shares it with the world. So a piece of artwork that would have been destroyed is shared with the world. Be and this makes outer space a destination location. It makes Polk County a destination location. Yes, definitely. And I commend Arts Ensemble and Outer Space, and I thank you guys for bringing something like this to Polk County because it really does, um, like you said, it brings people in, it helps bring awareness and bring involvement to our arts community, which is really always a good thing. Uh, definitely, definitely. We're very arts rich in Polk County, mm -hmm. and we're blessed. And um, I think sometimes, you know, I, I, and I, I know you're going to understand what I say when I say this. You know, I hear the, oh, it's Polk County. Mm -hmm. Like, are you freaking kidding me? It's Polk County, and we do cool stuff here. Yeah, you we know? really do. I'm sorry that I don't have a coast to, to <laughs> showcase my world, but our world is Central Florida, and we are in a very large county, and we have some of the most amazing artists, and we do some of the most amazing things, and it's not just Arts Ensemble. It's collectively all of the arts organizations um, that are really promoting the importance of the arts in our region. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you for talking to me about it today, Jane, and I'm excited to see what you guys do have coming up in 2018 and coming out to the, to the gallery to check it out. Awesome. Thank you so much. Don't miss the opportunity to see an international artist's work right here in Polk County. Be sure to follow Outer Space on Facebook for updates on their many events coming up throughout the year. That's all the time that we have th for this episode, but thank you for joining me once again. There's plenty going on in the Polk County Arts community, so stay tuned for a list of events coming up in your area. And as always, tune in next time for more art out and about.